sorry about the lack of content recently uh i've just been a little busier in my personal life recently so figured uh you know whatever uh i, I released a two and a half hour podcast that's some of the best content i've ever made in my humble opinion and if you want to watch you know a lot uh, some content of me uh for a while you can uh, throw that on anyway nba finals preview huh let's let's talk about it let's chat let's you know get down to business to defeat the huns mavericks celtics what do i think well i think that this is going to be a damn good series i think this is going to be a long series i think this is going to be a close series and that's for a, a few reasons right because in my opinion the celtics are the obviously deeper team however I think you could make the argument that the Mavericks have two of the top three players in the, in the series. Luka is the best player in the series, obviously, like very, very obviously. He's on a different tier than Tatum. Tatum is great, but he, Luka is a different tier above Tatum. And he has been very good since the Thunder series and since his, uh, you know, knee started looking better he looks a lot better shocking health is important who would have thought who would have possibly done thunk anyway so they have the best player tatum in my mind is easily the second best player you know Kyrie's great but i think tatum is is excellent in his own right and then you get to Kyrie versus jalen brown and i in my mind which Albeit, uh, Jalen Brown has been having a terrific playoffs, and he's historically had very good playoff performances and will continue to probably have great playoff performances. And I think he and Kyrie are closer than some people will say, but I do think Kyrie is better. He's a, a better closer, in my opinion, even though Jalen Brown had that insane three, and I think it was game one where it was heavily contested in the corner hand in his face you know just over like one or two guys nothing but net it was an insane shot that like you know probably secured that series not going like six games and rest is big in the playoffs and they secured themselves a good while of rest and that is a, a potentially big deal but also you know the Mavericks also had a relatively quick series they beat the Wolves in five and they did it in pretty convincing fashion. And that was even without P.J. Washington magnet ball, without Derek Jones Jr. magnet ball to the same extent that they had in the previous round. P.J. Washington, especially, like he dropped from shooting, I think, 45-ish percent in the Thunder series to shooting like 25 percent, maybe, in, in the Wolf series. But, you know, that is kind of the, the nature of role players in, in the playoffs. Some series, they'll be great some series they'll be bad and i think that the celtics just have more reliable role players you know they have Derek white who has been up and down in the playoffs yes but is consistently one of the best role players in the league and was getting in all-star conversations that i don't think were undeserved this season like i don't think he ever really had a shot at making it but i i think he was like the aaron gordon of this year like last last year was it or a year before that, Aaron Gordon was like in talks to be an all-star. It was the Andrew Wiggins year, so it was it was the year before. And he like kind of deserved to be there, you know? Like he deserved to be in the conversation. He was never going to make it, but he deserved to kind of be there. And like Derek White was never going to really make it, but he deserved to be in that conversation. He's an all-defensive level player. He averaged I think 16 points a game. It was really efficient, uh, was like the glue that held that Celtics team together, and they won 64 games. They were, I think, the third best net rating of any team ever. Like, they have arguably been one of the best teams of all time, and, and that is a big accomplishment, obviously. So what do you do with, you know, Derek White? Al Horford has been solid in the playoffs, but he's also, like, 80 years old and has geriatric knees 
he doesn't have knee problems but you know what i mean it, it, it's it's to get the effect across right it's to let you the viewer uh tommy in indiana know that hey man he's old but you know like if luca gets him in drop coverage it's cooked he is barbecue chicken uh collard greens you know like that is food for luka Doncic, and it's kind of no wonder like you know al horford is old he is slow and they don't have robert williams really to make up for it a ton anymore like Kristaps is really good defensively but he's still a drop big and luka played with him so he probably knows his game better than he does most people so you'd figure that he'd also probably coot cook uh tingus pingus he'd probably cook you know a good amount of uh, people on the celtics and that's luca like luca's gonna cook anybody you know luca cooked jade mcdaniels he cooked Nikhil alexander walker Kyrie also cooked them uh in a lot of those games and Kyrie is also gonna cook in this series those are just guys that you can't really stop from cooking you can scheme to like make it harder for them to cook but they're gonna get theirs right and a lot of my personal hoops philosophy comes down to listen man stars are going to be stars you got to stop role players from also being stars in certain games and it comes down to like single game stardom for role players a lot of the time because in in the thunder series for example pj washington had like 325 point or more games and a lot of that was scheme based like they they were like okay we will live with pj washington threes and pj washington threes are what lost in that series and it makes sense to, you know, try and completely stop star players. But at the same time, sometimes you got to be like, all right, they're cooking us. They will continue to cook us. We got to take away something else from them. Because if you have Luka Doncic cooking you, Kyrie cooking you, and PJ Washington cooking you, that's, that's going to be a problem for you. That's a problem that you need to address very quickly or things will get very out of hand. If anyone's going to scheme to shut, you know, someone down, it is Boston. If they're going to scheme to shut down the role players, it's Boston. Boston is one of the best defenses in the league. They're led by one of the smartest, like, coaching staffs in the league. They've had good, you know, uh, fucking defensive schemes all year. And also, they're great offensively. Dallas is a fantastic team. Great team. Boston is the better team to me. On paper, throughout the playoffs, throughout the regular season, we have seen Boston be one of the best teams. And yeah, they had an easy road to the to the finals. They play in a in a conference that is bad. They play teams that are not good on their way here. But they played everybody else in the in the regular season. They won 64 games. That matters. They have lost two games to the on their way to the finals. That matters. Like, they swept in the Eastern Conference Finals. They beat the Cavs in five. They beat the Heat in five. And, like, none of those teams are impressive, but what do you want them to do? They are playing who's in front of them. If you wanted them to play a different team, that team should have won the series before. It's the same thing that happens every year, right? Last year, the Nuggets had an easy path to the finals, even though the teams that would have given them a harder time lost to the teams that the Nuggets beat. They beat Whoever wins a series beats who's in front of them. They cannot control who they face. They don't pick, hey, we want to play the Bucks, we want to play the Sixers, we want to play the Knicks. They don't get to choose. They get who beats those teams. And the Pacers beat the Knicks. The Knicks beat the Sixers. The Pacers beat the Bucks. They were obviously the best team in the conference, and they obviously were going to make the finals, and they obviously made the finals for that reason. And yes, the West is a harder conference, but also Boston has not had a, as hard of series in this postseason as Dallas has, as most teams out West have. So they're more well-rested. They probably have less injury concern to worry about. I'm not particularly worried about Derek Lively, but hey, he got hit in the back of the head like twice in that series. That can mess you up for a little while. I'm not saying he's going to be messed up for the 
postseason. I hope not. Or for the finals. I hope not. But I wouldn't be shocked. So, like, I think it's going to be Boston in seven. They have home court advantage, which kind of hasn't mattered a ton in in these postse- in this postseason as much as it has years past. But, you know, it still matters to some extent to me. And I think they're the better team. I think it'll be seven I because Luka is the best player in the series, and I have to give them some, you know, credit for that. And, I mean, Kyrie Irving to me is the third best. But if you look at the rest of the rosters, like Jalen Brown is not that far off from Kyrie Irving. And then the Celtics from top to bottom are just a more complete team to me. And, hey, I'm not saying the Mavs cannot win by any means. It's going seven in my mind. Game sevens are notorious for anything can happen. And anything can happen in this series, and I'm looking forward to it. If the Mavs win uh, the finals, I think it'll be Luka Doncic as the finals MVP. And I think if the Celtics win it, it'll be Jason Tatum. But also, Jalen Brown probably has a puncher's chance there. He's ha- He's been great. And he deserves more credit than he's been given. So, that's my thoughts on the finals. Thank you guys for watching. Like, subscribe all that stuff. Uh, Yeah, I'll see you guys later. Bye.